Thank you, Tula, and good morning from the sunny Finland, and welcome also on my behalf to the Finnish country visit. As Tula mentioned already, I'm legal advisor Sini Tervo from the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, and I'm writing the legislation for establishing the Genome Center and National Genome Database, the use of genomic data and genetic testing. And I'm a very proud member of the LC working group in one plus million genomes and B1MG. So uh, I have been given the opportunity to present a short overview of challenges and relevant solutions of the Genome Act draft. And in this presentation, I will tell you briefly about the current proposal for the Genome Act short history of the process, next steps, and some challenges still to be tackled. As Lisa Maria Voipiopulki mentioned earlier, one of the key documents in the process is the proposal for a national genome strategy in 2015. In this proposal, the working group proposed that the legal framework should be developed for the Genome Center and government funding for the center need to be secured. The basic principles in this legislation drafting were already adopted in the proposal for a national genome strategy. The Genome Center would be a new public authority that would manage a national population-wide genome database and would promote the responsible and equal use of genomic data. Uh, in addition to these matters, the Genome Center would ensure that both genome database as a whole and the genomic data would be processed respecting citizens' privacy, autonomy, and protecting the individual care. Even though that the Genome Center would be an expert resource on genomic data, individuals would control the use of their own data. There have been two public consultation rounds of the draft law concerning the establishment of the Genome Center and for the use of genomic data. First one in the spring of 2018 and the second in summer of 2019 with more mature version. During both of the consultation rounds, there was a lot of public debate, especially over the National Genomic Database, because in these drafts, biobanks and healthcare service providers were obligated to store the genomic data in the National Genomic Database without an opportunity to keep copy of their own data. Now this prohibition has been dismantled from the draft. Next slide, please. Um, as we have already learned from the One Plus Million Genomes Initiative, building a genomic database is quite tricky. There are still many open questions related to the nation National Genomic Database but uh, still the rush to establish the actual genome center to run its task is real. That's why, and this is also news for our national partners and other stakeholders, our Minister of Family Affairs and Social Services, Krista Kiuru, has supported to give this proposal in two different phases. This first phase contains the act governing the Genome Center and other legislation related to the consent on performing a genetic analysis. By this act, the Genome Center will first of all be established and it will be given the official status as a national public authority for the use of genomic data. In this role, the Genome Center will also facilitate Finland's participation in international collaborative projects such as this one plus MG and B1MG. The Genome Center will be an individual authority, but it will be connected to the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare. Um, the Genome Center will promote ethical practices in the use of genomic data and genetic analysis. One of the key elements to this regulation concerning the consent protocol on performing the genetic analysis. Informed consent will always be the necessity for both the actual intervention and the analysis made from the sample. To support the Genome Center in its task in promoting ethical practices and also in developing the wide use of genomic data in healthcare, in the draft for genomic act, is proposed to establish a high-level expert group for the Genome Center. 
This model is adapted from the Finnish Act in the secondary use of health and social data for the data, per data permit authority. The expert group for the Genome Center would be include an expert on each of the crucial fields, such as genetics, genetic medicine, ethics, data protection, and gene technology. In addition to the benefit of establishing the Genome Center faster, the phasing will enable the Genome Center to participate in the drafting of the National Genome Database. The second phase, so-called Amendment Act, will include legislation on, some, on genome database and the use of genomic data. The National Genome Database would include genomic data from biobanks and healthcare, which will be obligated to store the genomic data in the database, but they can keep their own copy. Someone is having a microphone on. That's fine. I've just muted them. Please carry on. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, by the Amendment Act, the Genome Center will also create a national reference database of genomes. This would be personal data and a database of genomic variants, and it would be statistical data. After creating these databases, it will become possible to provide access to genomic data for use in the research and healthcare. Requirements related to the sensitive nature of genome data will be taken into account properly. For example, to demand of pseudonymization when processing personal data for use in research. The lawfulness of processing would be based on the necessity for compliance with the legal obligation, which the Genome Center is subject. So, in other words, the legal task mandate in the Genome Act. Even though that the processing of the genomic data would not be based on consent, data subjects could use their rights toward controller, in this case, Genome Center, and profit to use their genomic data if they do so. Ethical aspects will be involved in the second phase as well. There are several restrictions in the draft for the use of genomic data to protect the original goal of promoting health and to ensure that the patient's willingness to give their consent on performing a genetic analysis. For example, genomic data collected in the Genome Center would not be available to be used in the criminal investigation. Um, one of the latest developments in the field of promoting and harmonizing the use of genomic data is the setting up on a national expert group on genomic medicine, which the National Institute for Health and Welfare and the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health did together in April 2021. The main tasks given to the expert group on genomic medicine are to give guidelines and proposals for the national implementation of genomic medicine, to renew Finland's genomic strategy, and to report on new scientific and technological advantage, and to organize thematic workshops and seminars. The members of the expert group rep represent genetics, genetic medicine, ethics, and law. The expert group's work also naturally supports the drafting of the Genome Act. As mentioned earlier, the proposal for Genome Act will be given in two phases. Next steps with the draft will be taken with the phase one, that includes the legislation suggestion for the Genome Center and consent on performing genetic analysis. If everything goes as planned, this draft will be available for comments in public consultation round in the next autumn. At the same time, the preparations for the genome database, so both phase two, will be continued and this draft will be circulated for comments in the year 2022. One of the most relevant national legislations when considered to the scope of application of the Genome Act the Act on Secondary Use of Health Data and Health and Social Data has been one of the very first secondary use acts. The Data Permit Authority will play an important role within the process of secondary use of genomic data, but this preparation is still an ongoing process. Therefore, the lessons learned from the Act on Secondary Use are essential in the preparation for the National Genome Database. 
One of the main goals originally adopted already in the proposal for genomic strategy is to ensure that genomic data will be effectively used in the healthcare and in the promotion of health and well-being. Achieving this objective will require not only the development of national reference database of genomes to be used in clinical care and research, but also development of national legislation and principles to ensure that this goal will also be possible to achieve in action without harming any party involved in the process. Thus, there are still some challenges to tackle, especially when it comes to the utilization of the genome database and how it should be organized technically. Luckily, we have great experts to solve this dilemma, both in Finland and within the One Plus Million initiative, where we are struggling with the same kind of questions. Uh, I hope this short presentation gave you some basic knowledge on the preparation of the Genome Act and the Genome Center. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, I'm happy to answer now or later, and you may contact me. And please do so if you have any questions. Thank you so much.